Hi. This is the introduction of actuarial science and today we are about to share for you about one of the subtopic in topic 1, the role of actuary, the prudential supervision. At the end of this subtopic, the students will be able to explain the meaning of prudential supervision and understand the involvement of actuary and prudential supervision. In the next slide, I will explain to you what is prudential supervision. Prudential supervision is sensible which means showing good judgment and careful, especially by trying to avoid unnecessary risks. Like the Bank Nagara, Ministry of Finance and Security Commission. By prudential supervision, the regular aims is to reduce the risk that we will explain in the next slide. The regulators may delegate some activities that support prudential supervision to actuaries such as pricing, liabilities and more that will be explained in further slide. In addition, Actuary may have to approve what is done or just simply provide advice that they can chose to take or ignore it. By prudential supervision, the regular aims is to reduce the risk of policyholder, depositors, and other vulnerable individuals. Policyholder is the person who holds an insurance policy. Meanwhile, the depositors is a person who is making a deposit with the bank. And last but not least, the vulnerable individuals means a person who's aged 16 or over whose lack of the ability to protect himself from violence, abuse or neglect is significantly impaired through physical or mental disability or illness, through old age or otherwise. In the next slide, I will explain about the importance of prudential supervision. Why prudential supervision is important. They are important to encourage the high quality of actuarial practice in regard to the insurance finance. How to make it done. Prudential supervision can be done by promoting the common standards for examining technical competence, for professional conduct and for disciplinary procedure. What does the actuarial profession do? They support regulators in safeguarding the interest of policyholders. Why are they important? They are important in profession training and practice provides insight and experience in managing the risks that insurance companies face. This can be seen in a realistic provision based on the expected value of future experience as described below as the funding criterion which meets the existing obligations of the company. Hence, an additional capital sum based on the risks in the insurer's business that's generically known as risk-based capital and the business's immediate capital investment plans, and intended to provide a minimum specified level of capital adequacy. The next slide is about the involvement of actuary and prudential supervision. What did the institution needs? The institution needs to understand the risk, the charge sufficient prices and generate sufficient cash flow. They also need to set aside sufficient asset that's suitably invested. Other than that, they also need to cover the liability of their commitment and margin for safety. In order to satisfy the needs, they have to analyses the experience of the actuaries as an effective response for supervisory authorities as to utilize professional practitioners of whom actuaries, by virtue of their training and experience that are the most appropriate. The actuaries must meet a high level of standards of training and conduct since they are being monitored by their professional colleagues and are subject to disciplinary procedures. The regulator may control the institution's needs by rules. We take bank as an example. The bank have limited place of types of products such as general insurance. Also, what assets can be invested? Assets that can be invested is the certificates of deposit, bonds, real estate investment trusts and the peer-to-peer -peer lending. Besides, they also required a specific formula to calculate the sufficient safety margin. On the other hand, the banks may be allowed to use their own model instead of the regulator's model. But. The regulators will be closely involved in the consideration of the suitability of the modeling process. Regulator delegate the activities that support prudential supervision to actuaries which will be discussed in the next slide. The next slide is about the range of actuarial involvement in prudential supervision. These are the five key areas of actuarial involvement in prudential supervision. The first key areas is the pricing and product design. The actuary must design the company's products for the customer and determine suitable pricing. Second, they have to safeguarding policyholders' interest. Actuary as part of the regulatory requirements must monitor the reasonable expectations of policyholders and how they are treated as the insurers exercise the contractual discretion in the policy. Third, 
they need to establish the aggregate policy and claims the liabilities. Actuary must think how to reduce customer claims. For many insurance products, the actuarial training and education programs are the only professional program designed for this work. Fourth, they need to determine the appropriate skill. With actuary skills, they can advise on appropriate aggregate policy and claims liabilities and also the range and likelihood of possible outcomes. Actuaries also assess, advice and report on the current and future capital needs of insurance operations under a range of circumstances. Lastly, the fifth is they have direct responsibility to the board and the regulators. Whatever the actuary do, they must refer to the board and the regulators. If you are interested to know more about prudential supervision, you can refer to these links. That is all from me. I hope you understand well about prudential supervision now. Thank you.